hello guys welcome to another interesting tutorial on this channel and in this very video we are going to be building a multiple user authentication in a rest api using jingo rest framework all right so you agree with me that there are a lot of applications that demand you to build different level of users um, examples are like a hospital management system or a school management system where you have maybe teacher users and maybe student users where different users we have their separate dashboard with different restrictions and all that all right so and also we'll be building a, a react and ui to actually test this application better so we'll build a very simple ui in react to see how we can authenticate and uh, different kind of users and that's that and then lastly um this is my own opinion this is just me coding out of my head there may be a better way this can be done all right so this is just one of it and this one works perfectly well so it can be improved in case maybe you have a better way of doing it and you, you can feel free to actually comment in the comment sessions and share your opinions and all that all right so we're going to install Django and Django rest framework right now i have nothing done this is just an empty folder and we just have our virtual environment activated i believe that should not be a problem to any of you all right so we're going to install Django and Django rest framework right now all right so we'll say pip install Django and Django rest framework and also let's just install the Django cause header all right so this will take some few minutes to install so we'll come back when our installation is done all right so once we have our installation done so we need to create a project so we're going to say django dash admin start project all right so we have that already so we'll use it into call and in here we're going to create a, an app called users So once we have that already, so we'll open this in our code editor. All right, so we have our project um, folder and our app folder. So we need to quickly add the app and the Django rest framework to our installed app. All right, so that's done. So we are good to go. So we can set up our model. All right, so we know that the Django automatically comes with the with the user model built in. So what we're going to do, we are still going to be using the default user model, and then we are only going to be adding some functionalities to it. So we're going to add in two extra feeds to our user model. So we're going to import the abstract model. So we're gonna, all right, so we're importing the abstract user from the country that all the model we are supporting abstract user all right so we are going to create a user class and we're going to this class is going to inherit from the abstract user all right so the abstract user is actually containing the default and uh, user authentication model so what we're going to do we're going to add extra feeds to it. we are not making any changes it's still going to be using the default authentication system but we're also adding extra uh, feeds to the authentication model all right so in this case we are going to be adding two feeds one is called a um, freelancer because we're going to be using something like a freelancing uh, platform where we have users that are freelancers we have users that are employers who are there to employ freelancers and freelancers are there to look for job and the second user we want is um its clients we'll call all right that's once we have those two feeds set up we can simply get a string representation all right so we're going to return the username so that's for the user model and uh, also we need to create the individual freelancer model first we're going to have the relationship to the user model which is going to be model dot one to one feet add any other extra fees to it you can add maybe the phone number a skill feed 
uh, let's say a kind of brief description about who the person is and maybe the portfolio a link to the user's portfolio this can just be a link you can use a url feed or you can see a chart feed for simplicity we we'll use the chart feed all right so that's that we can create a So same we create for the client also. We'll create a client model, have a relationship with the user, related name of client, these are the clients, or you can use employer. This may have something like a company name. And maybe a description about the company if you have any other feeds you can add to it but i think this will do so we just simply return a string object so we turn the company name all right so so these are the two extra model the another thing we need to do is because in a rest api we normally use token authentication so similarly we're also going to be using the token authentication so we need to set up our token authentication and for that we'll be using the um, basic and uh, default token authentication that comes with the Django REST framework so if you check the communication you see the token authentication so we need to add it to add some settings first of all we need to address and let's go through all the token and also we need to set up the token model so first we're going to import the token model from um, from REST Framework from rest of our token dot models. We want to import the token model. Install up so we go over to our settings and we need to add to add the rest rest framework dot all token. Now the concept is simple is whenever a user is signed up, that is a new user is created, we automatically want to create the token model or the token for that particular user. So we'll be doing that using Signal. And then also before that, we need to let you know that we'll be using this new user class, not the default user class. So we'll set that up in the settings file. Settings file and in here, somewhere around, we're just gonna place in We'll call it odds model. I'm gonna set this equals to the users app dot the user class. Alright. And lastly the REST API settings. So we're gonna place that here too. Alright, where we are setting default authentication classes to use the token authentication. Alright, so that's that. I think on that settings we need to set is uh, the email, our account email. Alright, by default, the Django um, model actually make the email feed optional. Alright, so we want to make that unique. So we're going to put the settings here call account underscore email underscore unique email true. So this will make our email feed unique. Alright, so that's for that. So what we need to do next is uh, how to generate a token for our user. So we're going to be doing that using Signal. So whenever a new user is created, we want to generate a token, in a token model which we have imported from the odd token, that's um, framework dot token. So we need to import some other things for us to create a Signal. First, we're going to see from Django dot db dot model dot Signal impose. We're going to import the post save seen the post save signal and we also need to import the receive the receiver from dispatch so we're gonna say from Django so we can place that here I don't want to create some other files because it's just one and um, signal we are creating so we're gonna place that in our modest file and um, so we're gonna create and uh, call it create token okay. And this function is going to take in some parameters and any other 
keyword argument we simply want to set if created this true we want to create and to key and send it and lastly we need to bring in the receivers decorator first of all we're going to pass in the signal which is a positive and here we're going to set the sender what is sending it which is our model so we're going to say setting dot out let's go user order all right so that's the user model i'll be sending the signal and what signal is sending the positive so whenever this model is saved as a new user is created we want to create a token for that user so in our token model we have a user feed which will be the instance that has been created all right so that's all for creating our token uh model aspect is completed i think we can create a super user now to test that and first of all let's run our migration i see python All right, so we're going to see. All right, so we can test by creating a super user. Say Python manage. All right, so we created a super user. So we're going to run back our server. And here we're going to put in the admin we just created. All right. Sorry, we forgot to register the user model. Pardon uh, me. Uh, we just quickly do this out. All right. So once we have our three user mod uh, model registered, which is user model freelance and all that, so we can go back to our admin page and just refresh. Yeah, you see we have our model. So if we check, we can see our admin. And let's check the two fields that we just added. You can see the is freelancer is client. All right, that's working fine. So let's check if this user has a token. So if we go and what we need to do, we need to start creating an API around it. The way we are going to structure our API is inside the user app. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this folder API. So we're gonna keep our API in a separate model. In here we're gonna create uh and that's for the API folder. And so in here we're gonna create all our API related files like this serializer that I as one. So we also need to create the URL file. So inside our API folder we'll create its own special view. Alright, so so let's start from the serializer. All right, so we're going to import the serializer. Okay, so we need to import our models. All right, and here we need to create a serializer class. So first of all, we'll create a general user serializer class. As usual, we're going to create a class, specify our model. Going to the user model, and here we're going to specify the feed client. All right, so we're getting those three feed. We don't want to display the password to anybody, so this will give us our user object. Now we're going to create another serializer for signing up. This is just so we're going to create a free sign up serializer, and this. Yeah, we're gonna create the password too. Yeah, I'm gonna set this to input. Sorry, password. And lastly, we're gonna set one more attribute, which is gonna call it true. All right. So we only want the password to be user survey to provide password when they are actually creating. But when the object is being returned, we don't want the password to return along. In here, we can create our class. It's we 
which should be returned as well too all right so next we're going to create something like an s drive right underscore only so this is another way of also setting right only on a particular feed all right we can also create this realizer for clients to sign up which is eventually a kind of same but so else in our view we have to override the save method that is where we're going to perform a kind of uh, logic to differentiate the users when we are implementing the save method so have that in mind so for now our serializer is fine so we can actually see first of all register this uh, URL in our project URL file I want to input the thing so call the users.api that's your URLs start creating our URLs let's work on the view part all right so first we're going to make some inputs from our rest so we're going to say from rest underscore free what we want to import first generic because we're going to be using a class based view so we're using one of the generic views and also we need to import them um, from rest framework dot respond we need to import our respond object all right so also we need to import our serializer so we're going to see all right so once we have this import we can start up by creating our first endpoint so we'll create our freelance serializer and uh, freelance and sign up endpoints so here we're going to specify our initial serializer we're using the serializer class for this particular endpoint and here we need to define our post request all right guys we need to pass our request data to our serializer so we're going to say serializer and this we're going to set this to self dot get serializer all right here we're going to pass in the data equals to our request dot data which is the data that's coming from our request so once we get this we want to say serializer dot is underscore valid Alright. Once we have that, if this realizer returns valid, so we want to save. Once we save, once we save, we want to return. And um, this response is going to be a dictionary. First, we're going to have our user, which is going to be our user serializer. Now we're going to use our uh, user serializer. First, we're going to pass in the data instance that we want to serialize, which is the instance we just create. All right, and some other uh, arguments. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to pass, we need to save this, sorry, save this realized uh, user in a variable called user, and we're going to pass this user to a serializer. And here, we're going to pass in some contests. Which is gonna be obviously equal to self dot get self dot get underscore serializer contest. Alright, then we're gonna say dot data. This will return our user data. Alright, so once we do that, we also want to return our token. We return to import the token model so we so once we import the token model we can get the this course this user that is created so once we got that we can also get add the message to it account created successfully all right so the client sign up is eventually same just a different serializer so what we're going to do we just go on grab everything here yeah. paste it here then yeah we just change client sign of view then yeah, yeah we're gonna change it to yeah that's remain same 
so we need to create a post to serialize get this serialize check if it's valid save it and return a respond with the user serializer and also the token with the success message all right so i haven't done this we can so go back to serializer because we need to define the save method all right so we're going to override the save method because actually once the data is being passed to the serializer and the serializer validates the data it actually calls the save method and this save method is actually what perform the SQL operation of saving our information into our database so in this uh, save method we are going to perform our logic of separating the users those that are um, freelancer will save method all right uh, object class and here we're going to say this username which is expecting we'll get that as self dot self dot validated data because once the data we are passing into the serializer is valid it becomes a validated data because it has been validated by the um, serializer all right so this is coming as a dictionary so we want to access the username and secondly we have the email feed once we have those feed because we, here we are receiving two password password one password or two and we are only going to be saving one of the password while the other is just used to validate if the password matches so we're going to extract the password so we're going to say if password is not equal to password if they are not equal we want to raise a validation error all right so this will be the error message i will get if for any reasons this password does not equal this but if they are equal we want to proceed by setting the password so if they are equal we want to say the user dot set password we can set the user dot is because the user is not a freelancer then before we save the user so once we save the user that we want to automatically create the freelance um, model all right we will define the, the freelance model so we want to automatically recreate this model once the freelance user is created and for that reason we are going to set many of these feeds these keys to blank and non equals true all right so we set every other feed lock and not equals true so that we can create this model once the user sign up all right so once we save this we need to make migrations for this update and similarly we need to do the same for this feed and we can quickly make migration yeah it's complaining about our url file because we've not actually set up anything on url file we do that do that shortly in our URL file is completely empty so we're going to import when say from Django So let me quickly make a migration. Once we save the user, we want to quickly create a freelance model. So we need to import the freelance model. I think we've done where yeah, the user is equals to this user that was created. Alright, so once we do that, we want to return the user. On the user back and then similarly we also need to do that for uh, 
uh, the client's users that's the client sign up also so we'll just grab the same method so once we bring it in here we'll just simply make some little changes here we need to change the sort of is then it's kind of equals true i will save the user once you save the user we want to call the client user so that's all all right so that's for the save method so we can save both files and then that's that so let's set up our ui so let's quickly create the all right so we need to import this I say for um, all right all right so this was this gives us our two endpoint if we can actually sign up as a freelancer or as a client we'll be using postman to test for, for now so let's quickly run our server All right, so no issue. So let's quickly spin up a postman. And so yeah, we're gonna quickly enter your uh, gonna be a post request, and yeah, we're gonna go to the body. Let's use raw. So let's quickly bring this one first. So once we have this, let's test our API and see if we can create a freelance user. If we send all right, we can see our user was created. We are receiving 200 OK. And we can see the user object. The token is coming back. Check our database and then let's just check the user. We can see our freelance user was created. So if we check and uh, let's check the value of this, we can see the is freelancer is checked. All right, we can see the token was generated for him. So that's how we, if we can create a client user. can also use same password that does not matter so let's send and see if we can create a client user all right you can see we have a user object sent back you can see this client is true and you can see the token is sent back all right so if we go back to uh model we can see we have the test client one and test freelance one next we we have to create separate permission for both of them because we may have to create maybe some setting endpoints where only clients can access a freelancer cannot access that so that's the reason why we need to create a permission for both of them so that when we have the permission of maybe his client is only any any view that has that permission is only clients that can access that view same thing for freelancer so before we do that, let's set up the login endpoint. And that is very simple to do because the token authentication already gives us a view out of the box that we can just extend and add some little functionalities to it. It comes with its own view and serializer. So we're going to pick that and build on top of it. So let's go back to our view. First of all, let's do our import. I'm sorry. Um, resumework.autoken token out token you can see the two this is for the class view and this is for a function based view so we're going to be using a class based view so grab the opt-in out token it's a simple class and we can just call it custom and here we just quickly define the post request the self dot serializer class all right now you may be wondering where are we getting this laser from inside this opt-in auto token class that we are receiving 
he has his serializer part of it so we are using their default serializer and this serializer is expecting the username and password all right as the request data so here we're going to say that our contest to saying this time it's the request we're passing the request to the contest once you do that you can call the validate is valid on the serializer If that is valid, so we want to get the user as a serialized laser dot validate validated data of user. All right, so this will give us the user object. Now um, we are not saving it because we are actually using trying to get the token by this user. So <coughs> ten token and then if we're going to say the user is equals to the user <coughs> object all right so once we have a token like this we can return a respond variable but in this case we are getting the key so we say dot key all right so that will give us then we can also get the user id uh, that as that we want so we can just get the is clients so any other uh, information maybe the email you can get that also from our respond you are read by file you need to bring it in you can also add your name right so that's that so we have this set up and save this to help us to actually test the login features we let's create something like a dashboard that that will require uh, login access all right and then um, also let's create the permissions for these uh, users so inside our API will just create a permission file by saying permissions. So we're gonna import uh, from right. So this is what we need to create our permission classes. And yeah, we we'll just can just create yeah, we just need to define just one method which is called has permission, not has object permission, just has permission. This is a method that defined what who should able to assess a particular view so this is a relation to the view all right so this actually returns a boolean value all right so we just want to return the person need to be logged in that is authenticated and also is a client those are the persons that can access any view that has this permission class the person needs to be authenticated into login first and second parameter the person needs to be a client Alright, so that's all. So we need to also repeat the same thing. So we just grab everything here. This time instead of his client user, we just change it to his freelance user. This needs to be a freelance. So those are the two permission class that we have created. Go back to the view. In our view, we are going to create three more endpoints one is the logout endpoint so i'm going to do that now so we're going to define a simple logout view i've not imported that yet i need to import that and this is simply i'm going to define the simple post request right this is simply going to get a request dot out I want to delete want to delete all tokens so we just use return a respond because status we've not imported status yet so we we'll put that now from restroom work API view alright so those are our two imports that's fine so we can head back and here one status dot 
HTTP. We can use OK, HTTP OK. That's fine. That's for the logout view. Then lastly, let's create a a client accessible client only view and the permission class list. And in here, we're going to pass in the is put our own permission that we just created freelancer all right dedicated and also need to be a client for you to access this view that's the permission class then we can set this realizer this realizer class realizer. then here we can just define the get underscore object simply returns the request to request the user all right so the freelance only view so this can be the dashboard for the freelancer here we use the permission class and this time it's gonna be the all right the same so realizer same and get user objects all right so we can save this now let's create the urls for these endpoints we are going to create a url for all right so these are our url setup for the freelance dashboard client dashboard the logout login so let's quickly save and we're going to test that all this all right so let's head back to let's make sure our server is up and running so let's just start back our server another endpoint let's try and access um, client view get request if we send get authentication credentials being not provided all right so let's try and log in now to the login and you provide it yes i'm correct all right so these are for the freelance and login so if we hit send post where we hit send all right you can see we are having the token and we are having the user id so let's try and log in into a client's dashboard we are logged in as a freelancer but let's try and access a an endpoint for let's try and access an endpoint for a client and here we're gonna write token I'm gonna paste the token all right now we are putting in a freelance man a freelance and user token and trying to assess a client's view so let's see what will happen if we try this so once we hit the send you can see you do not have permissions to perform this action all right that shit is actually working fine though our, we are getting 403 forbidding that means you are forbidding for assessing this particular endpoint because you are not a client all right so it's working fine then if we now try to assess a dashboard for freelancer so let's go to the header and then provide authorization And here we bring token. All right. So if we haven't done this, so let's try and send a request one more time. You can see we are getting back the username, getting back the email, getting back our data fine. So it's actually working very fine. We can test that. You can see that you can log in with. A freelance user and a freelance user cannot access a client's dashboard 
all right but if we log in as a client we can easily access our dashboard so let's try and log in as a client now the client now so bring it i've provided our client's username and password it's a post request so we can send our request now all right we can log in you can see we get 200 okay and you can see the token is sent back the user ID is sent back <coughs> sorry and this client is set true all right our api is up and running we can sign up as an, a freelance user we can also sign up as a client user who's looking to hire a freelancer and we can also log in as both users all right so our multiple user authentication system rest api is working fine so i'm going to end this tutorial here in our next tutorial we will spin up a react application and design a very simple ui to interact with this api so that we can see how this really work so see you guys in the next video please please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up see you guys in our next video and happy